<sighs> Good afternoon and welcome to episode 448. <sighs> and this one's, <laughs> this one, sorry, I went off on the numbers for a second. And this one is entitled, um, Are You Praying for Someone to Love You? The Big Secret. So we're going to have some fun with this one. And if you know my talks, you may have a clue where I'm going, but I want to give you some newer insights perhaps and some inspiration. But before I get to that, let me, let me choose myself so we can jump in. Um, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my daily broadcast. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And every day I do these talks, excuse me, miss one thing. Oh yes, I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. <laughs> Gotta say my full title. And um, in case you hadn't watched a broadcast before, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, unless I announce otherwise, I do a Facebook Live called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today we're at number, episode number 448. <sighs> Going for 500, 500 looks like. And today's topic is on the theme of, are you praying for someone to love you? In parentheses, it should have been, the big secret. So, let's have some fun, shall we? Uh, um, the reason, I should say, what inspired this topic today is I'm actually in the process of editing... Um, <laughs> I'm going to be careful I say this. I'm, re I'm re-editing, I suppose, um, the book that I'm part of that's coming out very shortly called the, the Love Re called Love Revolution. And I'm rereading my own chapter because I, I was one of the authors in the book, or I am one of the authors in the book, and I'm also editing some other stuff in there as well. And I saw, and I started seeing the big theme. This book is, gonna be, is, is, a, is a game changer in so many ways because it is 20, I don't even remember now, 25, I think 26 authors or speakers, coaches, contributing their ideas in individual chapters around the subject of love. And it's called Love Revolution because we're going to revolutionize the way we talk about love in the world and what we're about. So that kind of inspired today's talk, roundabout sort of way. So, and by the way, if you're in my broadcast, thanks for being here, thanks for saying hi and sending lots of, you know, tapping the screen for love or whatever you do in Facebook, different from Periscope. Um, and also feel free to share it out. And if you have any questions, comments, please put them below. If you're watching this live, it's on Facebook. If you're watching the replay, it could be on YouTube, so you won't be able to add comments live, but you can certainly respond, uh, add comments and I'll respond afterwards. So, jump right in, shall we? So, the, I keep saying so, and I'm not sowing anything, but I'm gonna, well, I'll sow some seeds of inspiration, that's what I'll do, there we go. I am sowing. <laughs> and, oh, a little PS to, to the reason why I'm doing this. I was also interviewed earlier for a Narcissistic re um, Recovery Summit coming out in October, which I'll tell you more about when I get closer. If you're on my email list, I'll be sending out notifications about it in October. Um, and this theme came up there too. So it's on my awareness, or in my awareness. So let's get into this. I'm just stop avoiding it, shall I? Let's jump in. It seems that many of us, and I include myself in this, have had, over the years, I've, I think I've grown out of this myself, maybe you have too, this feeling that there's something missing in our lives because there's nobody else loving us. That somehow, our life would be so much better if we had somebody in our lives that would be loving, putting their love on us, loving us up, you know, all that sort of stuff, and making us feel loved. Simple but. Now, of course, that's a good thing, to feel loved. Shall I drop the shoe now? I'm not going to drop the other shoe just yet. Let me go a bit further before I, before I give you the, uh, like, aha, surprise type thing. We've been raised, most of us, by parents who loved us. And their way of loving us may or may not have been the ideal way of being loved because most of our parents weren't trained formally in how to express love organically, naturally, and abundantly. Most of our parents were dealing with their own issues when they were raised from. So in a way, the love we got from our parents was funneled through the conditions they learned from their parents. Yeah, this is a lineage thing. So a lot of the love we have received from the adults in our lives when we were kids was influenced by their adults before them when they were kids and their adults before them when they were kids and, just, and so on and so forth, back in generations. So for those of you who were raised in environments that had a lot of yelling and shouting or abuse or neglect or addiction of some sort, it's quite likely that the, parent, the people who, the parents that did that to you in front of you and demonstrated it for you, got it from their parents and from parents before that. And the truth is that you in this point in life have the power you have the power to change a lineage-based or hereditary-based pattern, program, practice, condition, whatever you want to call it. 
So listen up. That's another piece. There's another piece I want to put in there again. I, I'm, I'm prefacing the solution with some more what ifs and do you have this and this is one of your challenges. So another part of the um, challenge that we face is that we are, well, let's be blunt. We are wired to connect. As human beings, we love connecting with other people, generally speaking. Most of us, some people like to be hermits, but most of us like to interact with people. We get, we get lifted by being around other people. It's one of the joys of being in this, um, I'm going to say this, in this world to interact with other people and enjoy that. So relationships in particular are a great place to receive love from, which is wonderful. However, I'm going to have to get to it. I can't keep avoiding it. However, there's a price that we pay. There's a massive price that we pay when we put our eggs in that basket, which is somebody else to hold. Now, here's the thing. Because this is putting the analogy out. <laughs> These things come through without me realizing it. Imagine holding a basket of eggs that are very sacred to you, very fragile, very important to you. And you give them somebody else to hold on to for safekeeping. And maybe they don't care about them as much as you do. So they may be clumsy and bang them to a wall with them and break a few of them. Or they might pull them on the ground and stamp on them because they really don't care about them and they really don't really want to deal with them. So they just crush them, don't, give, don't, don't care about them at all. Or they don't know what to do and they, leave them, they neglect them, walk off and leave somebody else to, to steal them and take them away from you. I'm using the nag analogy to, to make you think of something. So imagine that you have this basket of eggs that is being less than ideally kept safe by other people that you trusted. Well, here's the thing. You do that with your love. Yes, you do. You trust people with your love who may not deserve or honor the love that you have. So in relationships, you go out there and meet somebody, you want to have love from them and feel uplifted and inspired. And what they give you is a convoluted, conditioned, and um, baggage-laden amount of love. It ain't fun, it ain't pretty, there's a lot of breakage involved, and tears too. The challenge we face, most of us who haven't <laughs> learned this lesson, <laughs> I was careful I say that because I'm going, I've been doing this work for 30 years, I think I know some stuff by now, but I'm not saying you need to do the same amount of work. I shortcut it for you when you're coaching with me, just to say that. But the thing is that we all have um, rules and conditions about loving and relationship. And so we tend to attract relationship partners to us that fit those rules and conditions because that's what we're familiar with. It's the way life works. It's a powerful little lesson. Thank you for the hearts and the love and the, and the, and the, the joyful faces too. Just watching them go across the screen. So I'm, I'm seeing a fork in the road in my message. So I'm watching where I'm going. So bear with me. Jermaine, good to see you, sir. Yes, for sure. Commune for community and that love and connection with us all. Yes. Thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. But I was further down the road. So let me get back to where I was thinking. <laughs> so with this, um, I keep using the word so lately. I don't know what's going on. I, I have some familiar terms that throw up, show up, throw up, show up in my language, it seems. Okay, so we have conditions and flavors through which love she's come to us. That's the way we tend to be. It's a wiring pro it's a wiring diagram for the human mind and the human heart. We are imprinted like circuits when you're kids with the way love should be expressed by the way that we are imprinted by our parents and the older adults around us, including older siblings. Which for some of you is like awesome. And for some of you is like, oh shit. And for some for a lot more people it's oh shit than we think. Because a lot of people are tied to the wiring when they come, when they're upbringing, which is tied to violence or pain or hurt or suffering of some sort, or abuse even. And so, there are people. Gina, what did you miss? <laughs> I'm explaining some of the people's um, conditioned loving and wiring that we come through, and I'm getting to solutions. So you haven't missed the solution yet. By the way, um, I recommend watch yesterday's broadcast because I spoke to what I commented on your post about. Um, getting attention versus keeping attention. I did a whole Facebook Live yesterday about that. And that was thanks to you. And I mentioned you in the broadcast. So you can take props for that. Um, so I'm talking about the fact that we have this challenge where we think we get love from out there and we tend to attract it through the lens, the filter, the conditioning that we were raised with. This is stuff I've talked about many times, but I'm, I'm attempting to give a different answer, a different perspective. So let me throw this one piece in because since you didn't catch this one earlier, um, I said, imagine that you have a basket of eggs fragile eggs that you've toiled over the chickens to lay them and you're very happy with them, the hens to lay them and you're very happy with them. And you give them somebody else for safekeeping. Um, 
Oh, <laughs> no problem, Jermaine. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, you can be quiet. That's fine. Comments are involved as well. So, a basket of eggs, and you give it to somebody for safekeeping, but they don't take care of the eggs the way you want to. They put them down, or they um, crush them. They don't care. They clumsy them, bang them to a wall, or they give them to their friends, and they walk away, or they leave them for no, leave them with nobody attending them, and they get stolen. You wouldn't be very happy with that. But you do the same thing with your loving. You give it to somebody else for safekeeping, and they may neglect it. They may abuse it. They may be clumsy with it. They may neglect. They may neglect it. They cover all the pieces. They may just simply ignore it. So, the the challenge with loving in relationship is it's not as easy as A B C. <laughs> thank you, Gina, for that. I'm not repeating it though because I'm I'm broadcasting live and I'm being polite. But thank you for that comment, Gina. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like that's the thing we have in love. When we're in loving relationship, it's not usually. Usually, sometimes it is, but usually it's not a graceful, easy journey where you fall in love and everything's perfect. Because perfection is, one, it's overrated. I'll take it to that in a minute too. But secondly, it's something in the movies that nine times out of ten doesn't matter for your life. So, first of all, I want to speak to a couple of things. So, perfect love is overrated because it's usually vanilla and has no depth to it. Love should be, my belief, my rules, not yours, but mine, should be passionate, exciting, Dirty at times, growth oriented, fun, playful, all these different things. That to me is what love is inclusive of. So make it perfect, sometimes it's too pristine. And maybe it's just my interpretation. So that's one thing. Second thing though, actually there's three things now. Okay, second thing though is that basket of eggs that you trust other people to get. No, sorry, that's the third one. Second one, <laughs> that conditioning, the wiring you have of how, how you've been trained to love. If it's not working for you, the good news is it can be changed. The way it gets changed is, first of all, to be aware of the differences between what you want and what you're getting. Because you know you're suddenly going to go, this is not what I want, but I keep getting it. Why not? Why am I doing that? That awareness is a huge step in the process because most people are oblivious thinking that's all they're going to get. And they're always in this, this circuit of attempting to get a different love relationship and end up in the same situation again and again and again with different, different people. Ladies, you know when you've dated different guys, that at the end of it, the same result happens, even though they're different guys. In them, it's inside of you. That's a big wake-up call. When you've got that wake-up call, then the next step is to seek help or guidance or facilitation to heal that that pattern, that programming, that conditioning that you were raised with. That's why people like me come in handy, um, or, or therapists if you want to go that route, or go with some other counselor, somebody who's got skills that can help you. The second piece I want to talk about, because I'm going to give you both of these, is the biggest mistake people make is they don't think they are going to get love unless it comes from out there. And I tell you right now, you will never, yes, you will never be loved as much as you can love yourself. As, as strange as that sounds, and I'm not speaking about narcissism here, just to be clear about this. I'm, I've become a passionate um, messenger to propose that we need to love ourselves more, as in self-love practice, as in caring and compassion and love for ourselves, because we judge the but Jesus out of ourselves almost all the time. It's a trap we fall into because we don't usually honor and respect ourselves. And I'm, and I'm not going down the path of being the egotistical, narcissistic trend. I'm talking about human experience. We as humans tend to judge ourselves more harshly than we deserve. So our, um, let me say this, our daily experience is one of being demeaned and diminished by ourselves more than other people. And because we do that, when other people criticize us, we take it in. We take it personally. We don't go, oh, that's not true. When you learn how to, well, we're sort of, when you practice, not when you learn, when you practice honoring, respecting, loving yourself, in whichever way you do this, you do it from a place of humility and from heart, not from like ego, like I'm better than you and I'm better and all that stuff. That's not love. That's ego. Different. When you truly love yourself and really feel it inside, then what happens is you become autonomous in a way. You become whole. You become more aligned to your true values and you get to have this wonderful experience of not needing somebody else to love you. In fact, you get to find people that love you as you are and that's abundance and overflow of what you already have. And frankly, if you have more than enough, that's a good place to be. And so when you are self-loving, by the way, when you're more self-loving, you become more attractive. So if you're single, good idea is to love yourself first. More than necessarily the cars and the makeup and all these different things I mentioned yesterday. That self-love will take you way further than all the appearance stuff that I talked about yesterday. So, 
watching the time because I've got to get going soon. I've got, to I've, got to, I've got events to be at tonight. Um, so here's the key thing I want to make sure you get. Self-love is a self-discipline practice. It's easy to do and there's very ways of doing it. I, I created one as a giveaway oftentimes in my talks, but I've actually made an audio meditation with guidance that you can download yourself, which has a morning and evening meditation using a mirror that allows you to really build up and, f and flex your self-love muscle, so to speak. So this little package is an evening meditation, sorry, morning meditation to set up your day, an evening meditation to complete your day, as well as a, well now a 30 page, I think it gets big, but description, guidance, and explanation of why self-love works and how to do it more effectively for yourself on all levels, including some of those more challenging body issues too. Yes, including body issues. I highly recommend you, ch if you don't already have it, get it for yourself, it will change your life. And I'll put the link in afterwards, but I'll give you the verbal one now so you know how to find it. If you go to Barry Selby, my name, dot com forward slash self love or one word, you can read about it there. And if you want it, just grab it and download it and start using it. If you do that for 30 days, I guarantee you it will change your life in, in amazing ways. And you will find yourself more available to love and attracting love like you never did before. It's a powerful little practice. That, that thing, by the way, and I said it in the, in the, in the description in, in, the, in the, um, um, the guidebook, it is absolutely. It, it's a transformational experience that you wouldn't even understand. It's so amazing to do it. So when you do the self-love practice, what happens is things around you will change like you never expected. It's a powerful thing to work on. So um, for that, I, I'm, I'm very passionate about this. So self-love as a vehicle, as a tool, as a relationship key, profound, powerful. That's why I created the product. So again, barryselby.com forward slash self-love is the way to find it. So that's one piece. Second piece, if you're someone who has been... Um, challenged in this area <laughs> as I mentioned and I suggest you get some help I do offer coaching however you can't sign up for it no you can't <laughs> if you want to get coaching with me you've got to do one thing which is have a conversation with me first because I don't work with just anybody <laughs> only the willing people who want to do some transformational work so I invite you if you really are willing to sign up for a discovery session it's a 30 minute conversation a gift from me to you if you go to barryselby.com forward slash chat click there Choose a time, fill out the form, and we'll set up a time to talk. Those two things will help you transform your life, I guarantee you. And you will actually find the loving more powerful from the inside out, and life will change completely. I think that's it. I'll put, oh, by the way, I'll put the links in below so you'll have them as well. Um, that's it. That's really what I want to talk about was about how love is on the inside coming out, and the love out there is only useful when you feel like yourself first. Key also is to love yourself clearly, cleanly, and effectively from the inside out, so that what you attract matches that. I think I've made my point. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for being on my broadcast. If any questions, comments, please put them below and I'll respond afterwards. I'll, again, I'll put the links in afterwards as well. This broadcast is one of a series of talks that you can find on my business page on Facebook. And that is on my business page. You can like that page there, which is Barry Selby, the author. Please like that page and then watch all the broadcasts that are listed in descending order because the latest ones at the top. Then also on my YouTube channel, because I've populated my YouTube channel with talks, and my channel is my name, Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine, same as the title for my talks. And thirdly, they're also now on iTunes. I have a podcast on iTunes called the same thing, Messages from the Masculine. You can sign up for that, subscribe, and download all my talks. I'm doing upload I'm still uploading slowly but surely, because I've got 448 here as of today. And I've only got like 40 on the podcast. So you can start there. But stay tuned, there's more coming. Join me again tomorrow. I might be doing it early because I've got an evening appointment tomorrow as well. Busy week, what can I say? People want to see me. Um, take some action. Take some action to learn to love more, to love more healthily, and to get the love you really want. If you work with me, great. If you work with somebody else, it's fine too. But take some action. Don't sit there and feel like it'll never happen to you. Because if you make take steps, it will. And that is your homework. <laughs> thanks for watching thanks for being with me I will see you again tomorrow and take some action I'll see you then bye